Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast, Lucky Episode 13. Got a lot going on in today's Pancast. We're going to talk some carbon steel skillets. We're going to have a walk update. We're going to talk a little bit about cast iron, some stainless steel. We've got some viewer mail, some carbon steel seasoning tips. Where I want to get started today is with a little bit of pan redemption. Pan redemption. If you remember from the last episode, we had a guy named Barry wrote in, sent me some pictures of his carbon steel skillet. Had some trouble with the seasoning. This is what it looked like. Well, it turns out this story has a happy ending. Swapped some emails back and forth with Barry. Got him on track, gave him some tips to get that pan cleaned up. And listen to a couple of the emails I've gotten from him. The first email was titled, Oh No. Then I got one with the title, Yippee. And he says, I followed your instructions to a T and just made a perfect egg. Definitely like that. Got a couple other emails with some pictures he sent for seasoning his pan. This is what it looks like now. He says he's going slow and using thin layers. He says it's almost entirely nonstick. And he's cooked a bunch of hamburgers, one steak, six eggs for his wife, and four grilled cheese sandwiches. And he also says carbon steel is fun and he needed someone to share his experiences. Absolutely agree. Let's give Barry a big hand. He went from this to this in just one week. He went from headaches. Now he's enjoying his carbon steel. He enjoys talking to other people about it. And if there's anything that sums up Uncle Scott's Kitchen, I think it's that. We help people get their pan seasoned. We help them get cooking good food. And we like talking to each other about our carbon steel and other cookware. Pretty much sums up Uncle Scott's Kitchen in a nutshell. Way to go, Barry. Okay, last time we also talked about grill pans. I use grill pans as part of the poll for this week. Ask people about grill pans. Is the food quality worth the headaches of the cleanup or not? Turns out over 400 people voted. Thought that was pretty neat, about 430. Only about 23% of people say that grill pans are worth it, that the grill marks are worth it. 57% of people say they really fear the cleanup and that the grill marks on their meat are just not worth it for grill pans. Some of the interesting comments we got about the grill pans are, Rita Kay says, I thought it was just me with the grill pan. I had such a hard time cleaning it that I completely gave up on it. No, thank you. I agree with that. I was in the same boat. DJ Coma writes in and says, grill pans have less Maillard reaction. It takes longer to cook and longer to clean up. The only upside is the food's appearance, which doesn't outweigh the cons to me. I'm gonna concur with that. And Capsa has a comment, which I think says it pretty well. He says, I'd rather wait for summer and use an actual grill. I'll go with that too. The snow is melting off out here. It's almost time to get outside and start grilling. With the pan spotting update, those Mineral B Pros that we talk about so often, they are now sold out in the 12 and a half inch and the 11 inch models. I sent them an email last week and they said that now it appears that no new pans are going to come in until May. So it's going to be May for those Mineral B Pros. As always, if you see one you like and you're on the fence, jump on it if you get a chance. They've also got some promotions going on for Mother's Day. I got some affiliate links to those below. Now I want to talk about a three-pan strategy. Person named Sohilko wrote in, said that he and his wife have a daily driver non-stick skillet that needs to be replaced. They use it every day. First thing here is I am glad you're going to replace that non-stick skillet. I don't like those at all. Um, why do they need to be replaced? Where does that non-stick coating go over time? Does that non-stick coating go into your food and you eat it? Does it evaporate on the hot stove and you breathe it in? I don't know, but I don't like those non-stick skillets. I don't like the fact that they wear out. That coating goes somewhere, probably into your body, but I don't like them. So they're replacing that non-stick skillet. And they say they already have a lodged 12 inch cast iron. Good. And they were going to get an all clad stainless steel frying pan, either a D3 or a D5. Until he started watching some of my videos, he decided to get a Matford carbon steel skillet, which he liked at first, but then his wife found out that they couldn't use acidic ingredients in it. So now he's in trouble and wants to know, should he throw that away and get the stainless steel pan after all? Well, I got quite a few thoughts on this. 
What I think you really need to do is go with a three pan strategy. Use that for the foundation for your frying pans and get one of each of those. Now there is some overlap between the pans, obviously, but each of those kind of excels in at least one category. Now I just happen to have those three pans here myself, or at least very similar ones. This all clad stainless steel frying pan. Uh, this isn't a D3 or D5, this is the copper core. I think that helps uh, the heating, makes the heating a little bit more even. I had a guy from one of the cookware manufacturers tell me that when you go to a tri-ply, tri-ply is really important. That really does add a lot of benefit. Once you get up to five ply or seven ply, that benefit kind of tapers off and that becomes a little bit more marketing. So take that for what it's worth. The stainless steel, this is what you're gonna to wanna to use for anything acidic. Tomatoes, anything with vinegar, white wine, red wine, reducing those, those can be kind of acidic. Anything with citrus in it, lime juice, those are going to do a lot better in a stainless steel. So you definitely need one of these. Now the cast iron and the carbon steel, I got the mat for 11 and 7 eighths and the lodge 12 inch here. There's a little bit more overlap here, but there are some differences and nuances. The cast iron is gonna be a little bit heavier and thicker. I like it for a high temp sear of a steak. I also really like it for things like cornbread, where it's gonna go in the oven, where something's gonna bake. I really like the cast iron better for that. Now you can do the high temp sears in the carbon steel as well, but it has a slicker surface than the cast iron, much smoother. And I like these better for things where I want food to slide around. Things like fried eggs, things like omelets. Anytime I'm gonna move the pan, it's much lighter than the cast iron and you get close to, not quite, but close to the nonstick performance of some of those chemical nonstick coatings without the harsh chemicals. So I really do like that. But as long as you've got the kitchen space and your wife really doesn't mind, I would go with a stainless steel, a cast iron, and a carbon steel. That lays a great frying foundation for your kitchen. Speaking of wives not liking too much junk in the kitchen, Last episode, I mentioned that I was starting a review of a Lodge 14-inch cast iron wok. Turns out that wok had a crack through the handle. I got onto the customer service chat line and they said they're gonna send me a replacement. That just came in. So now, much to my wife's chagrin, I have two. I guess it ends up costing these companies a lot of money to ship this cast iron back and forth. With the damaged one, they said I could either just keep it, I could donate it, I could recycle it, whatever I want to do with it, but I didn't have to send it back. So that was nice. Now I have two walks and the review is back on track. So my goal as always is to have the most in-depth pan reviews on the internet. When I get a walk, when I get a new pan, I don't just crank that review out in a day. We do a ton of cooking around here and we actually eat all the food we cook. So I cook in these things for a few weeks, very heavily before I form what I consider to be my opinion about a piece of cookware. Long story short, the review ain't ready. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave your questions, comments, and feedback below. Check out the shopping links, buy something expensive. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast.